Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and today I am so excited to share with you my first full fabric collection with Riley Blake Designs. This collection is called Blooms and Bobbins, and there are 15 different fabrics and colorways in here, and I am super excited to play with all of them. Today, instead of just showing you the actual fabrics, I thought it would be fun to go through kind of the process. Where did I start and how did I get to these prints that I've got in front of me here? So, let me show you how that happened. Before Blooms and Bobbins was a fabric collection, it actually was parts of these two watercolor sketches that I had done. I used so two of these flowers, these two, and the leaves from this one, and then I used this watercolor rose that I had done just on a practice page. So let me show you, after I painted these, how I combined them with some drawings I did on my iPad Pro in Adobe Sketch app and how that colorways changed until we ended up with the fabrics that I, you see here. So we're over at my desktop here, and the first step for taking a watercolor and digitizing it and making it something that I can work with to create a fabric print is for me to scan it. So I use the scanner function on my printer, and this is what it looks like once I'm done scanning it. So this is the original version of this rose image. And from here, what I do is take it into Photoshop. Watercolor paintings have a lot of color and color variations in them, but you cannot put that many color variations into printed fabric that is screen printed this way. I'm limited to 16 colors in a print. So what I needed to do next was remove the background and I'm using Photoshop to do that. So I remove the background, and then I use some features in Photoshop, and I go through and edit the colors so that I have fewer colors than every single color variation and gradient that is in the watercolor photo. Once that's done, I can take this into Adobe Illustrator, which is where I really create my prints. Some people use Photoshop to create their fabric prints. I prefer Illustrator, it's just something I'm more comfortable working with to create the repeats. This graphic is something that I drew in Adobe Sketch on my iPad Pro, and I'm using a watercolor brush in that photo, in that program as well. And so this was just something I was doodling one night while I was watching TV. Here's another doodle from watching TV one night, and I imported both of these into Illustrator so that I could combine them with the other flowers that I had watercolored and create, put them all together to create prints. So if we look at the peony pictures, this is what this watercolor painting looked like once I had run it through Photoshop, digitized it, and then I brought it into Adobe Illustrator. Once it's in Adobe Illustrator, I can even further eliminate the colors. Like I can take all the blues and just make it one blue. So all those leaves are one blue. So I thought I would take you through kind of how I create a print out of all those disparate elements. So here are the digitized and color simplified pieces that I use to create the main floral print. Again, this one was from my iPad. These leaves were from my iPad. These pieces were from that peony painting, and this is the rose. And I start layering and combining them. So here is all the little pieces of that peony, and let's stick the rose in over here, and this one over here. And I just kind of play with them until I like the composition and how everything is looking and play with where do I want the pieces, like maybe that one goes better there. I can play with colors within this as well, but once I get a composition that I like, liking the way that that's looking, what I then do is I group that composition together, and then I'm gonna place it somewhere, like this square here is my, um, fabric square is my print repeat, and so I'm gonna place this somewhere where I like that, and then I'm gonna copy it 
to the other side of the screen of my fabric square. And what that's going to do is when I cut the borders off, it's going to make sure that these things repeat. So like if you come down here to the actual repeats that I created, if I copy this whole thing, you can see how by moving this over to that edge, those are going to line up and that print's going to repeat. Now of course I'll edit out these extra like gaps in between things and stuff, but that's essentially how I create the prints. I just take elements and then I'll copy them and move them around. For this top part of the print here, you can see what I did was I took this whole element and I rotated it. And that's because I like scattered prints so that you can cut them in any direction, not a directional print. So that one looks like it got rotated like this. And then I did the same thing where I took the rotated one and then I kind of like placed it. And I can see where, in where it is in relation to the other pieces of the print as well. So I can move it around and make sure that where it is looks pleasing. And then of course I need to copy it to the other side and see like obviously this is not going to work because it's all on top of those prints. So I need to move this down quite a bit here and then do the same thing with that one. And that's not going to work because it's running into those again. So I just, I keep playing with it until I get them to land in a space where I can move them around to the edges where they will be able to repeat without landing on top of other parts of the print. That's just a real quick outline of how I do that. If you don't have access to this software though, it is still possible to create repeats. Um, I actually have a blog post showing how I did it completely with a watercolor sketch that I did and scissors. So, and, and my phone, like to photograph it. But um, I'll link to that below in case you're interested in a very low tech way of doing the same thing that I'm doing here with software. And then I played with the colors some more after I turned these into the floral prints. So the different elements get combined together and then I can start playing with colors and changing colors so that they work with different colored backgrounds. And so I play with that for quite a while until I end up with what I like. And in this case, these prints went through many, many different color variations. Actually, the first print that I started with was the single flower print. And you can see, I just this is the same flower. I just played with the size and I've rotated on the screen. But I really at first wanted this gold colorway and that didn't end up being in the final collection and that's perfectly fine. I love where the final collection ended up, but you can see where I started that I was thinking more kind of fall colors. And even in the original palette, once I developed some of the prints, some of the main florals, this was the second print, I was using again very warm colors, this warm cranberry and burnt orange colors. And going into adding in other prints, um, I was still keeping some of those colors in the prints, but it just wasn't working. And so this is why I love working with Riley Blake. Holly is the creative director there. And she and I went back and forth discussing colorways. So she really helps edit to get me back to what we saw in the end. She was, it was also her suggestion to add in a geometric print, which is where the stripes came from, and um, a novelty print, which is where the little sewing machines came from. So here is digitally what the final collection looked like. So you can see some of those warm tones are still in here, but they're much smaller accents now within the flowers. And we also played with scale quite a bit. So the scale of these florals became this top scale here. And that was because I tend to think in terms of how big a scale do I want prints to be to sew on clothing. But if we're printing on quilting cotton, then I really have to size my scale down because you want it to show off well in a quilt block and not on garments. So it's a very, it's a different mindset for me to have to get into to figure out the best scale for the florals. And that's again where I really appreciated Holly's help with things like this. So here's the whole final collection. You can see kind of all in one place. And then that all gets submitted to their computers and then they take them and that's how we get the prints of the actual fabric. 
that's then sent to their manufacturing companies in Korea and those then separate out the colors and add the salvage um, signatures and all of those things and then they print things up and then this is going to be able to be in your hands soon. As soon as this is available online, I'll be able to add links to the description below of where you can buy that. But in the meantime, the link there is going to be to Riley Blake so that you can see the whole collection on their site as well.